Number 18 says objects with masses of 190 kilograms and 490 kilograms are separated by 0.43 meters. A, find the net gravitational force exerted by these objects on a 65 kilogram object placed midway between them. He wants the magnitude and the direction. And B, at what position other than infinitely remote ones can the 65 kilogram object be placed so as to experience a net force of zero? So first of all, we have this object here. We have this object here. This one, uh, we'll say on this side, is, is 190 kilograms. And this one over here is 400 90 kilograms and then there's an object exactly right in the middle and that object weighs 65 kilograms and so the distance from here to here is half of 0 0.43 so it is 0 0.215 meters and and the same goes for this distance over here it's exactly 0 0.215 meters. So we need to figure out the gravitational pull of each of these. So the net force, the, so the, the, the net force equals the, the gravity of, of one minus the, the gravitational force of two. So we'll call this one one, we'll call this one two. I guess it's counterintuitive because one usually comes on the left, but, but we're going to call this one one because my my in intuition tells me it's going to have the greater gravitational force so in, in order to prevent it from being negative it needs to be the first one so let's set up this, the first one where g I've, I've wrote g in here where g equals 6.673 times 10 to the negative 11th so I just write g to simplify it for, for my screen and so 490, uh, 490 times 65 is, is 3100 Eight, or 31,850. And then we're going to divide it by um, r squared. So I went ahead and put in r squared where r, if you remember, equals 0 0.215. And so squaring it gives us this value. And so um, I divide it by that uh, value. And then I have the, the force equals g times 6890210. Point zero nine two five. So it's six hundred eighty nine thousand um, times g, and so g gives um, because g is six point six seven three times ten to the negative eleventh. Anything to the negative. So if I had ten to the negative two, this equals one over ten squared. And so saying to the negative is like putting it under, so making it, dividing it by. So I'm going to divide this by 6.673 times 10 to the 11th. And now if you wanted to, you could just multiply it to the negative 11th. I'm just saving space on here. And so, and so uh, the resultant force, the force uh, of, of the first force, it gives us 4.5978 times 10 to the negative fifth. So now we want to find uh, force number two. And so we, we could say that G uh, times the, the first mass, we'll say 190 times 65 over R squared, which is 0 0.046225. And then we can work that out, where 190, uh, 190 times 65 is 12,350 and when we divide that by by our r squared when we divide it by our r squared we get we get g times 267171.444 and so again instead of instead of um, trying to fit all that in I'm going to divide it by 6.673 times 10 to the negative 11th and I get an, an answer of F2 equals 1.7828 times 10 to the negative fifth and so I got a I can kind of because these are both 10 to the negative fifth I can kind of ignore those just for the moment and I can just subtract these two numbers right here and and get um, my, my answer and so when I subtract it, it's equal to 
815, and then I can tack on the, the, uh, the end of that, times 10 to the negative fifth. The resultant force is 2.82 times, uh, times 10 to the negative fifth. And so that's part A. Part B says, at what position, other than infinitely remote ones, can the 65 kilogram object be placed so as to experience a net force of zero? And so this is going to actually be a, um, a quadratic equation, and you're going to see why here in a second. So I can, I can say that um, the gravity of, and we're going to call, let's just go ahead and, and um, label some things. So my, my mass one, we're going to call mass one 490. We're going to call mass 2. Um, mass 2 is going to be the object in the middle, so that's going to be 65. And mass 3 is going to be the, the other object of 190. And then we're going to call, um, we want to know um, if I have my mass 1 here and my mass 2 here, where can I place, or I'm sorry, not mass 2, if I have my mass 3 here, where can I place mass 2? we'll just say right here so that the force this way and the force this way are even and so I need to find the this distance right here and so this distance what we're just going to call we're going to call this distance um, the radius so this is we're going to call this R so R equals the distance from distance from M3 and so we can start off by say by setting up our equation for for M3 so the gravi uh, gravitational constant times times uh, m two times m three over over and we're going to call that one r over r squared. So this is supposed to equal equal the the gravitational constant of m two times m one over and this whole distance, if you remember, the whole distance was 0 0.43. So over 0, uh, we'll call it D for just now. But remember, D equals 0 0.43 meters. And so D minus R, and this quantity is squared. And so in this equation, the only unknown is the R value. So um, one thing you'll see, I'm going to set this all up again right here. And so one thing you'll notice is that we have, um, if we if we divided this side by g, we could do that on both sides, and we could cancel out the g's, okay? And so I, I'm going to cancel out the g's. The other thing you'll notice is that I could factor my m2 out to the side, m2. I could factor that out to the side. I could factor this m2 out to the side, and you can you can see that we can divide by our m2s on both sides and cancel those out as well. And so we have a situation where the mass 3 over radius squared equals the mass 1 over the, the, the whole distance minus the radius squared. And so if you just multiply, um, if, you, if we cross multiply, so we would have m3 times d minus r squared equals m1 times r squared. And so what you'll notice is that, that this quantity, whenever we, whenever we work it out, whenever we expand it, so d minus r squared, when it gets expanded, it becomes d squared minus, or, uh, yeah, minus 2dr plus r squared. Okay, and we're multiplying that, that term by m3. And so we, we get m3d squared minus, minus m3 2dr plus m3r squared, and that equals that equals m1 times r squared. So that equals m1 time m1r squared. And so what I propose doing is subtracting the m1r squared over to the other side, so that we set the whole thing equal to zero, and we have. A, an, a an equation that we can solve with the quadratic uh, formula. And so our, our squared term would be m1 minus m3, uh, and this, this would be um, in, in parentheses r squared, and then we would, we would add to that the, uh, I'm sorry, not that, we would add to that the negative m3 2dr, so minus m3 2dr 
and then we would we would uh, add to that add to that d squared. And so let's go ahead and plug in some numbers so that this is less confusing now. And so M1 is 490, M3 190, D is 0 0.43, and so our first term was was M1, M1 minus M3, M3 R squared. So this changes to 300 R squared, and then the next term was was M3 times 2 D R, so M3 times 2 dr, 190 times 2 times uh, 0 0.43 is uh, 163.4 r, and then so that this is a, a minus, and then we, we would add m3 2 d squared, so m3 times 2 uh, times d squared, so that would be 190 times 0 0.43 squared, which equals uh, 35.131. Okay, and just one other thing. Actually, I was just uh, had this thing paused, and I was going back and looking at the math, and uh, I realized that I, um, if you caught it, great. But this should actually be negative 300 r squared. Okay, now this thing is completely set up for the um, for the quadratic equation. And so, if uh, if you don't have a graphing calculator, you can use um, negative b <coughs> plus or minus the square root of uh, b squared minus 4ac all over 2a and so b b equals negative 163.4 a equals negative 300 and c equals 35.131 you plug all of those in um, if you have a graphing calculator however you can plug it in and find the uh, whenever you whenever you hit y equals and plug in your equation you graph it and then you hit the second button and hit calc and you uh, scroll down to number two and hit zero and you can use that to find the zeros so whenever you do it you're gonna find that x equals 0 0.165 but that's uh, that's not your answer so you remember that we said that this was our our 490 kilogram object this was our, our 65 in the middle, and this was our 190. And we were calling this unit right here, this space right here, we were calling x. So in order to find the answer of how far from the 410 kilogram or the 490 kilogram object, we need to do 0 0.43 minus 0 0.165. And this is going to equal 0 0.265. One last thing I would like to say on part A, it asks what direction. I hope you're uh, you're intuitive enough to figure out that um, when it's directly in the middle, it goes towards the heavier or the more massive object. So it's toward the 490 kilogram mass.